Hello everyone. Um, I'm going to show you some of the features of ECUS, which is an astrophotography tool in KSARS, and it was released with KDE 4.10. So uh, today we'll perform everything under simulation, since the weather is not really good, and I promise to uh, make another video where I uh, perform the same steps but uh, using my real astroph astrophotography equipment. So for starters, we'll go to a tools menu, and we can see just ECUS uh, just down here. Uh, we're gonna run ECUS in local mode since we assume that the instruments are connected directly to the PC. And as we can see here, we can select which telescope to um, operate. So we're gonna just select the default telescope simulator. Same goes for the CCD guider filter wheel, uh, filter wheel and focuser and so let's start ND here and ECUS is dependent on ND drivers uh, and they have a lot of support for uh, a lot of instrumentation out there and then let's just connect all the devices okay there we go so we see here we have a few tabs that just came up uh, one of them is, you see a disabled tab, it's the align tab, it's it's one of the features I, uh, it's on my to-do list, I haven't done it yet, and it's to use drift uh, alignment to, to do a, a precise um, polar alignment, so this is hopefully will come in a um, future ECOS update. But the most important functions here for uh, the amateur uh, as a photographer is to control the CCD uh, along with the filter wheel and to be able to focus and guide so these are pretty much uh, all the major steps that goes into uh, a typical uh, astrophotography session so uh, if we go here to the CCD tab we can see that we can select which CCD uh, device that we want to use and on some cameras we have a guider chip that we can also uh, select and image from. Uh, we see the usual controls, the exposure, the pinning, uh, the frame, and which type of frame we want to take. We also have option of setting the prefix, which includes uh, a custom name, let's say if we want to do, for example, M42 as a prefix, and then we can select like uh, to uh, uh, add the type of the frame, uh, any filter, whether it's red or green or H alpha or luminosity and also the exposed duration these are just optionals here we can set the count and delay between images and here are some um, uh, filters that are applied to images in case we need them they're not really necessary but uh, it's not really recommended to do this unless you want to see uh, like a high contrast or auto stretch image just for previewing but not for saving the image itself uh, here we also we can add um, an ISO 8601 uh, timestamp, which is just a long timestamp in the file name. And um, so, so let's just get started here. Let's first go to um, KSTARS and uh, try to sync our telescope to DNEP. So let's go telescope simulator and then sync. And there we go. We can see that our telescope is now centered on DNEP. And let's try to take a preview, for example, using the guider and okay there we go so we get sort of something like DNEP here uh, this is this is a uh, simulation is based on using the uh, uh, general star catalog GSC so um, it's it's pretty decent for simulation purposes um, so this is why I use it so we see here the case stars uh, fits viewer displaying this image here and um, we can then um, try to use one of the features now let's let's go to the focus tab and so um, this is pretty much one of the first things you want to do you want to first uh, achieve a, a really good focus and we're using um, the V curve here uh, for you guys who are not familiar with it it's just uh, uh, it's just a curve that displays the absolute position against uh, a parameter we call the half rux radius or HFR and um, the goal is to get uh, the minimum HFR we can get 
which is more reliable than the uh, FWHM overall. So what we're going to do first is we are going to um, go to our um, focus simulator. Here we go. And we're going to um, make it uh, like we were going to make the focus worse. So here we go. This is the um, this is the seeing, and this is the FWHM. And let's just um, let's just focus out. Our, okay, there there is the absolute position, right? So uh, let's let's go really far this way. Look to eighteen thousand. So we set the focuser. Focus is moving. So you can see the FWHM here. It's now eleven point three four. And if you go back to the CCD and take the same image again, so let's review that. And there we go. You can see it. It's well. This is the original one here. This is after the the focusing uh, out of focus process we did, and we can clearly see it being out of focus. So let's see if, if the focusing method here can get it back. So let's set it to auto auto mode. Well, let's set it to manual first and let's capture one image here. And so here it calculates the initial HFR which is 7.87 which is a pretty large value. And now um, let's set it to auto mode and here are some autofocus options which is uh, usually you don't have to play with that but it sets the tolerance level when it stops the algorithm for the HFR it says the exposure limit and um, if you're using an absolute focuser which you probably be using then this says, uh, sets the initial step size for the uh, initial search pattern and so let's just leave everything as it is and let's say um, well, here's here's a real really good feature first. It's called framing, which is just if you want to get the focusing, um, if it's too out of focus, the the algorithm might not really work. So sometimes we try to get it as focused as possible manually. So what we do is that we do we say start framing, and what we get is we get this focus tab here which just updates every half a second well because we have a second exposure every half a second we have a new image now of course it doesn't look like a video because it's simulation but if you take it if you do it in real images you'll see it uh, updating every half a second but it is updating right now and so let's just stop that and um, let's make this actually okay so let's start now the uh, focus uh, autofocus operation so start autofocus and here we can see it move oh okay that's that's pretty quick so we're seeing it uh, capturing images calculating HFR and here we see the V curve going and actually autofocus is complete that took like a, I don't know like 10 seconds or less of course in <laughs> real um, real sky condition and with real cameras it probably takes something like a minute to get uh, optimal focus but we can see here well half of the V curve because what it does is that it almost approaches the minimum of the V curve uh, then it passes it up and then goes back again to the perfect minimal position of the V curve here so here we go we achieved the focus and we can actually confirm that by going to um, by going here, and it seems the perfect position is actually thirty six thousand, and uh, this is the the new FWHM, which is equal to the seeing, which is really it's it's this is an optimal optimal value. It's impossible to get in reality, but so so here is the uh, the focus operation, which was I think pretty straightforward. So the next thing we do um, is we usually select uh, a guide star uh, if you want to do long exposure imaging, of course. And um, up here we select what, which, what is the guider. So it will be the CCD simulator guider. And it will be a 
guided through what? Because um, usually you have a guider through from the telescope itself or you have the SD4 port from the camera itself. So we'll set it that the actual uh, uh, guiding commands will come from the camera through the SD4 port to the telescope. This is the exposure, we'll set it to one second. So um, I wonder if I can make this window sticky here. Uh, okay, oh, there we go, always on top. There we go, that's much better. So let's um, capture an image. Oh, there we go. So we captured an image. And uh, what it does is that actually it automatically tries to select the best uh, a guiding uh, star there, which well, Deneb is a pretty good guide star. So uh, we'll not, we'll just double click that or click it, and there we go. So we finished the second step, we select the star. And here we do a calibration process. And um, so let's do that. And um, let's start calibration. And we can here see the calibration process going on. So it's it's trying to move it in different directions and calculate some values that are necessary. OK. So now we see the guiding uh, tab is now enabled. We don't have to do anything. We just go over here. And we can see that all the values here, the information, uh, focal ratio, um, the aperture, all the information here are filled already. And uh, what we can do then is that um, we simply here uh, do capture again, just to confirm. We select the star again, and we just say start. And that's it. This is when the um, guiding starts. So the auto guiding part now started. And now we're using this um, this image. And, and this one is coming from the CCD simulator guider chip, not the primary chip. And here we can monitor the performance in terms of uh, deflection from the optimal uh, center of, of the right ascension and declination of the, the star. Of course, we see it's pretty smooth because this is a simulation again. But what we can do, we can do something. We can, we can test it out a bit. So what we can do, we can go to our ND control panel which is um, here and we can go to the telescope simulator and and here we can introduce some um, some errors so so we can knock it up north or south or east so let's let's do that so let's go um, let's watch this here let's go uh, south a bit so here we go we want south and there we go. Oh, that was very quick reaction. So it brought it up to, to this one. And, and here we can see this spike in declination here. There we go. So let's try to go again, um, like east, for example. So that one east. And then I think it should bring it back. So it's OK. So it's back back to its position. We can see here, here see the deflection again being corrected. And here we can always monitor the the delta in arc seconds between the optimal right ascension declination and where the star is. So while while this is going on, we can just simply hop back to the CCD tab and think, okay, well, uh, we got the focusing done, we got the guiding done now. So let's select multiple images. So I don't know what's in there around Deneb. I don't think we have interesting stuff there. But let's say, um, so Deneb, and let's say this is a type. And we're going to capture from the primary CCD. And we'll have, let's say, five images in the red filter. We don't need the timestamp. And let's display it in case our Switz viewer. And then we can add the job here. So now this is queued. So we have a red filter, uh, type light, binning one by one, and exposure is uh, one second. So um, count five. And 
I'm just putting one second so because I, I don't want this video to take too long to to make and then let's do another one uh, where it's like for example H alpha same parameters but different filter and what we could do also is that let's say you want to take like bias frames and um, and we want to take dark frames and this is very typical we usually have to take bias dark and, and flat frames in each uh, asset photography session so so we got everything there set up already and so what we do is just, is just start the sequence and there we go it's just doing that and actually if we go if we hop to KSTAR's viewer here we can see all these images see being captured uh, it would be awesome if it was really that fast okay and here we see the bias being captured and here, here we can see the progress so now we're the last job here and for really a long night this is very convenient because it can take hours uh, to capture uh, you know the frames and uh, you don't want to be sitting next to the laptop all day all night long just clicking what you want to do you can just set up your sequence here start it go away and if you come back you can you can monitor the guiding and um, you can even redo the focusing if necessary here so uh, guys this is pretty much a quick demo of what um, ECOS can do for us so um, ECOS is still under heavy development uh, but I practically use it for all my um, astrophotography sessions um, it continues to be improved and hopefully I can get the alignment uh, module done uh, pretty soon it, that took a long time a long uh, time to do uh, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.